welcome to SBG TV News for Friday, June 7th, 2019. I am Investor Boynes with the details. After a 10-year campaign, SVG created history today by becoming the smallest island state elected as a non-permanent member on the UN Security Council. SVG and four other countries were elected non-permanent seats on the council and will serve for a period of two years commencing January 2020. Larissa Pugs the Kid tells us more in this report. Long campaign by SVG to become a non-permanent member on the Security Council has paid off for the country securing 185 votes from a total of 91, displaced in El Salvador, the other country from Latin America and Caribbean group vying for the seat. El Salvador received six votes. Number of ballot papers, 193. Number of invalid ballots, zero. Number of valid ballots, 193. Abstentions, two. Number of members present and voting, 191. Required two-third majority, 128. San Vincent and the Grenadines, 185 votes. The four additional non-permanent seats on the UN Security Council went to Niger, Tunisia, Vietnam and Estonia. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez was among SVG's UN mission present for the vote. Briefly addressing the media on SVG's election, an elated PM Gonzalez congratulated we other elected members rights. and thanked his team for their hard work. At our um, mission here and we will add more, including more women. He used the opportunity to outline some areas of concern that SVG would like to see addressed as a non-permanent member on the Council, including that of climate change. We are committed to the principles of the equality of states, non-interference and non-intervention in the internal affairs of other countries, defense of sovereignty and independence, and for overall sustainable development. Clearly, as a small island developing state, we are very concerned about the security consequences of adverse climate change. And there are many such security consequences. The PM said with SPG's presence on the UN Security Council, Latin America and Caribbean states will be well represented. To the people of El Salvador and the, the government, we had a, a competitive election, but that's over. The business of doing the work in the interests of our peoples of Latin America and the Caribbean, our America, and to work with other countries across the world. We are about peace and security. Meanwhile, UN General Assembly President Spokesperson Monica Grayley, during her address at the 73rd session of the General Assembly, outlined some expectations of the newly elected Security Council members when they take up their seats in January 2020. Their position on the reform itself, uh, of course, uh, is um, a part of the discussions, but uh, they will be elected uh, to uh, have a mandate and a work, part of the, the working uh, uh, dynamic of, uh, of the Council. There are 15 countries in the Security Council, of which five are permanent members with veto rights. The U.S., Russia, China, the U.K., and France. The remaining 10 countries are elected for a two-year period, staggered in groups of five. The UN Security Council is a UN body charged with ensuring international peace and security. The Security Council is the only UN body that can take binding decisions which countries must fulfill. Reporting for SVG TV News, Larissa Pogsley Kidd. Meanwhile, moments after the voting session at the UN ended, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez called in on WFM and announced that Tuesday, June 11th will be a national holiday in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. PM Gonzalez said this is in celebration of the historic victory by SVG as the smallest island state to secure a seat as a non-permanent member on the UN Security Council. PM Gonzalez related the overwhelming support SVG received through the vote process, noting that it was very emotional for him when SVG's victory was announced. Countries voted, and it was electrifying. Yes. And uh, we knew we knew that 
people were going to to give us over, overwhelming support. And I will tell you at the moment, tears came to my eyes mm-hmm. when the verdict was announced. Mm-hmm. Historic, mm-hmm. the smallest country ever to sit in the Security Council. Um, I, so Louis advised and I have accepted advice. And I've informed the Cabinet Secretary that Tuesday will be a public holiday. She will put all the matters in place to have an extraordinary gathering <laughs> in commemoration of this historic occasion mm-hmm. of our election to the non prominent seat of the Security Council. PM Gonzalez expressed gratitude to SVG staff at the UN who campaigned for more than 10 years and explained what it means for SVG to have a seat at the table as a non-permanent member on the UN Security Council. In 1979, anybody dreamt that this would happen. We went to independence with a lot of people still living in shelters because of the suffering. Yes. Here we are 40 years later about to enter the Security Council, elected to enter the Security Council. I paraded my, my mission to the, to the press corps at the UN, mm-hmm. and um, I, I showed them how many women we have, and young women. You know, there's a preponderance of women on our staff up here, um, and we're sending others to help to man the stations in preparation for this historic, um, uh, uh, membership. It's. It's. I tell you. Um. I. F- I feel truly that this is the law. The day that the Lord has made. Yes. It will contribute greatly to peace and security in the world. Yes. And, and in this hemisphere. Congratulatory messages are pouring from various organizations and countries for the historic feat achieved today by SVG. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley and Antigua and Barbuda Prime Minister were among the first to write PM Gonzales. In the letter from Antigua's Prime Minister Gaston Brown, he said SVG's election is as a result of hard work, noting that PM Gonzales has earned respect for his governance and leadership. The Antigua and Barbuda leader said that he is confident that SVG will give a strong voice to the cause of small island states at the Security Council and that it will continue to uphold principled and objective positions on issues with which the Council will grapple. CARICOM Se- Secretary General Ambassador Owen LaRock also extended congratulations to the government and people of SVG on the historic achievements. SVG has been commended by Cuba's ambassador to SVG, Vilma Valdez Pino, for making good representation on behalf of Cuba internationally. Speaking at a joint media conference yesterday to welcome a team of Cuban trade officials on their first trade mission to SVG, Ambassador Valdez Pino said Cuba continues to face sanctions and blockade by some countries, including the U.S., and it is important to forge partnership with countries in the Caribbean, including SVG. Also to say to to say thank you uh, for the support we receive every year from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the United Nations every year for St. Vincent and the Grenadines and for the other countries of the Caribbean. Uh, we wanted to to uh, to underline that and uh, to uh, um, very uh, very um, in this year this year also we are facing a new struggle new struggle in the United Nations against the blockade. And we are sure we will count on the support of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines and all our brothers. But in the meanwhile, we continue working. We continue uh, looking for the business possibilities. We continue looking for the, for the possibility of, co- of cooperation, collaboration in all the sectors we can. SVG has benefited in many areas from Cuba, particularly in the medical field. There are also cultural exchanges and external trade relations with the Spanish-speaking country and SVG. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sandra Peters Phillips, said SVG continues to strengthen its relations with Cuba. It is in keeping with Goal 1 of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines National Economic um, Development Plan, which is re-engineering economic growth and is therefore opportune in facilitating national development. 
I wish to take this opportunity to wish the mission every success and look forward to positive reports of new and dynamic business ventures in the coming months. Such trade missions must become a norm if we are to exploit the tremendous potentials which exist in our region. If we fail to do so, then others will certainly will. Let us not miss these, these opportunities that the mission presents. Over 30 students from various secondary schools were sensitized on detecting good academic providers to assist them and their peers to add value th to their qualifications and avoid institutions which award bogus certificates. This through an exercise hosted by the National Accreditation Board in the Ministry of Education as part of activities in observance of World International Accreditation Day, which will be observed on Sunday, June 9. This year, World Accreditation Day is celebrated globally under the theme, adding value to the supply chain. Senior Education Officer for Accreditation Decima Hamilton said there are still a few persons who have not been engaged in due diligence relating to their academic investments. She said coming out of the sensitization exercise, it is expected that the students will become ambassadors for the unit and assist others to make good decisions relating to their academic investments. They are going to be able to share with their peers the information that they would have gathered. We strongly suspect that they are going to be able to influence their parents in making prudent decisions. I suppose too that many of these younger persons would probably have siblings or perhaps even their parents who are taking um, courses in anticipation that at the end of this, their, their respective programs, they're going to be able to advance themselves. So we are hoping that these younger persons are going to be ambassadors for the unit because we can't reach everybody individually. But we suppose that if we target the younger ones, they will be able to target their significant others, their parents, their friends, and those they, uh, colleagues that they would have on social media. And at the end of the exercise, they would really feel that understand and appreciate the fact that um, they are a better place to be able to influence the decision making process especially when it comes to adding value to their academic engagements in whatever field they, they would choose. World Oceans Day will be observed here tomorrow June 8th. Today, members of the National Environment Day Commemoration Committee were joined by some residents of Sandy Bay and other persons from the private sector in a cleanup exercise at the Big Sand Beach in Sandy Bay as part of efforts to conserve the fragile ecosystem found in that area. SVGTV's Barvin Oliver was there and files this report. The ocean possesses a wide variety of marine life, which play a crucial role in maintaining life on land. However, the ocean ecosystems are threatened by the activities of man when they pollute the beaches and ocean space. Today, members of the National Environmental Day Commemoration Committee, along with students from the SPG Community College Environmental Club, the Sandy Bay Government School, Massey Stores, and the Forestry Department, came together to participate in a cleanup exercise at the Big Sands Beach in Sandy Bay. Two months ago, Public Education and Communication Officer at the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority, Tony Barrow, expressed sadness at the pollution found at the Big Sand Beach, which she lamented can negatively affect sea turtles and other marine creatures. Today, Barrow said she was delighted to help play a role in protecting and maintaining the ocean ecosystems. Polluted um, beaches affects the economy, it affects the, the uh, marine creatures, and they also affect the habitat as well as they affect our health because now we are noticing that the plastic, because which is one of the, the number one um, issue that the marine environment is, is, is the number one issue that is affecting our marine environment and we realize that plastic is now entering into our food chain as we as these fish or whatever they are as they eat the plastic particles when they're broken up we are eating these the fish and it is um, the plastic is entering our system and this is obviously detrimental to our health so we have to do our part and that is why we are here today taking a stand taking action to take care and protect our our ocean and one youth activist adimola williams representing the ministry of agriculture and a teacher at the sandy bay government school 
said today's exercise serves as a means to sensitize the youth on the importance of keeping the environment clean. And the youngsters especially, we have to thank the San Diego government for coming out to assist us because we can't forget that it starts at a young age. It's not just about the adults but also about the youngsters. And it's really that they understand that such an undertaking is really bad to their future and how to keep our country clean and also the animals in our natural, in our natural habitat. Sorry. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. I remember as a child, this path was a little bit big and the ocean was all the way back. And every day we were all here. Mind you, I can't swim, but I was here. <laughs> so um, thank you all for coming today and for involving the students. And this is a key concept that they're currently learning in school as well. Conservation, ocean life, and just caring for the environment. So thank you for inviting us and we are happy to have you. Meanwhile, Forestry Officer Robert Tees said today's activity will have a positive impact on life both on land and in the ocean. Because the thing is, if you have a healthy beach, you're going to get healthy fish, okay, and you're going to get healthy reefs, okay, and too, you're going to get a healthy community. So I think it's very great. It's awesome that we are doing this um, collaborative group. For SVG TV Evening News, I am Bavin Oliver. Meanwhile, in commemoration of World Oceans Day 2019, the Sustainable Development Unit will be hosting a beach cleanup at Brighton Beach tomorrow, which will be followed by a fun day. The fun day will begin with a short opening ceremony where the Minister with Responsibility for Oceans, Camilla Gonzalez, will deliver the feature address. The Sustainable Development Unit said the Brighton Beach, which was once used for sand mining in order to meet local construction needs, is expected to be a focal point for ecosystem restoration activities in the near future. Carnival Beach is coming right up. All right, all right. The tribe's mass band is hoping to maintain or even better last year's success in the mass competitions for Vinci Mass 2019 with the presentation Endangered. The band's presentation this year focuses on endangered species and tribes will be highlighted through eight sections. Band leader Fernando Seru said they are confident that this year's presentation could earn them several top places in the mass competition. Um, we have six others sections as I said we have the coral reef because if because you all know that co the coral reef is one of the endangered um, species in the sea or one of the endangered items in the sea um, we have the the butterflies the morphe the blue morphe butterflies um, we have the Vinci um, parrot okay we also have the Kalinagos we have the um, the gold peasants and then we have the um, another butterfly, the, um, the black, the black, which is called the Ceylon butterfly. Yeah. So basically, that's and we have the tiger. Okay. Yeah. We are very confident this year. We aim into the top by the year because um, a lot of persons um, are happy with our presentation. Persons from other bands have been calling me. Um, persons, some critics who throughout the year would say, well, Fernando, come on. I don't like that one. But this year, they're happy with what we're presenting. They're happy with what we're doing. And we, 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 we're happy that persons are happy and that we could reach to the top. Ferry said their biggest challenge each year is sourcing materials to make the costumes. Basically, um, sourcing the materials that we really want. Um, it's kind of challenging. I mean, we had to go all the way to, to Trinidad, and we all know that um, the effort to Trinidad is not um, something that um, all the mass burns are happy about. But um, we still have to do it. Sometimes, okay, even though we order the items and, and they send it down for us, sometimes they send the wrong color and it 
causes a whole set of problems for us. So that's one of the challenges that we face. Also, um, financially, I mean, some of the companies we have had on board with us or, or, or places, they have treated us very well. They have um, 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 assisted us very well. So we thank them for that. But um, if other business places would come out and help some of the small bands, because, um, I mean, we have creative minds, and sometimes just the financing um, um, would pose a problem for us to bring it out the way we really want to. Surrey is inviting masqueraders to be part of the Tribes Mask Band this year. We're asking all Vincentians to look, come and see what tribes have to offer this year. Our costumes are reasonable, only 400 and the children 150. Right? You will love it. We have, it's all inclusive. You get your drinks on the road. You get your food on the road. Security is top. Music is top, so you have to set some music on the road. When the band is tired, then the hi-fi will come on. Well, Tribes Mass Band is located um, just after the new library on Murray's Road and opposite the Ministry of Agriculture. So you could come there, you could come in the yard, you could come and register. We have group rates. If you have a group of y'all, we will, we will sit down and discuss it and give you a nice package. So like I said, it's all inclusive. You drinks on the road, all kind of drinks, and you, you will enjoy yourself, your food, your everything. So we're asking you to come out, come and support tribes, come and have fun. Because we know it's a, it's a fun event, let's come and have fun, enjoy ourselves peacefully, crime-free, and, 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 and let's live in love and unity. Vinci Mass is the baddest carnival ever. So says Digicel Country Manager Fanta Williams in her remarks at a media launch of Digicel's Carnival Promotion for Vinci Mass 2019. Digicel's Carnival Promotion engages revelers in carnival activities while giving them the opportunity to enjoy unlimited experiences with the company through free events, tic free events tickets, carnival packages and more. The promotion starts from today and will end on July 5th. Williams said Digicel will also be doing a social media promotion on Vinci Mass and encourages everyone to support the promotion. The shop there, they're getting a little fade, right? And they're having this big debate about who carnival is best. Now, if anybody knows me, know I grew up in Trinidad, right? We'll leave that day. But I had to say, I said, listen, I'm going to tell the truth. Vinci Mass is the baddest thing. I had people come from Toronto last year who said they have been to every carnival including England and including Toronto and Miami, New York and nothing compares to a Vinci carnival. So what we need you to do because we know Vincentians have an opinion about everything is we have a campaign right now called Carnival Proud and I'm asking you all to participate in that. Because let me tell you something, nothing is better than word of mouth, right? Now's the time to be telling the world, the regional countries, the globe, about how wonderful our Vinci Mass is. We're giving you a platform on which to do that. So we're really asking you, become part of that. Celebrate with us, Vinci Mass. You will be rewarded for that as well. So we're asking you to please raise your voices and let people know just how wonderful um, a Vinci, our Vinci Mass is because it is one of our greatest tourism products. William said that Digicel over the years has been partnering with some of the best carnival activities for Vinci Mass and this year will be no different. The company is providing support to three mass bands and several other events. Representatives of some of the events supported by Digicel expressed gratitude to the company for its support in building the Vinci Mass product. One of the number one bands in St. Vincent and the Grenadines teaming up with the number one community network in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I mean, Blood the board, we, we try to keep our costumes so that the ordinary person could play mass. Hence, Digicel providing that sponsorship would, would make that perfect for the ordinary person to play mass. It's our second year hosting the country Soka Monarch. We have 22 of the very best young artists from uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has to offer. Someone was just telling me and my wife a minute ago, I wouldn't call names, but he was saying, you know, Country Soka Monarch is the biggest bar none. Rural Soka Monarch after the National Soka Monarch in Kingston. Because 
It's been a long journey, not exclusive of sweat and tears. Digital Temperature 2019 is dubbed It Hooked Me, because let's get this straight. At this point, you can't let go of an experience that is bar none on the road come Carnival Monday. We want to thank Digicel for their continued support and we look forward to delivering a band that will leave all parties satisfied. Mm -hmm.